G'day fellas and welcome to an FFA guide. In this guide, we're gonna be taking a look at five simple tips that you can use in your games, which will hopefully give you a little bit easier of a time and increase your chance of winning. Uh, with regard to my credentials, just to let you know, I've got about a 60% win rate in FFA. So I feel like I'm somewhat credible when it comes to talking about this topic. So let's get into it and talk about the first most important rule of FFA, which we're about to see happen in this game. And it comes to settling your town centers. So there's multiple components to this, but number one, try to avoid settling on the axes. okay? For some reason, people are naturally going to try and move their kings, their bases towards these axes, the X and the Y axis. So if you find yourself clicking up there or clicking across over here try and think outside the box a little bit try and move up towards the sides that's the first part the second part of it is look to cancel your tc if things don't look good so at the start of the game whenever i'm i'm playing i'll take a note of who i see and i'll, I'll look at the direction that they're running so i've already seen green here and i've seen that he's running up so i think to myself okay that's one person up there then we see purple we saw purple was heading up i see red red's moving down these are all important things, all important little bits of information that I'm slowly getting. He's orange. I spot orange moving up. And now I'm starting to build this theory in my head. Hold on a minute. Has everybody spawned on this top side of the map? And of course, we will see that indeed that is the case. Absolutely everybody has spawned on the top side of the map, except for Teal. Uh, which, um, well, Teal, count yourself lucky, my friend. Anyway. So now we move on to this next component of, of this rule, which is be flexible in cancelling your town center. At the end of the day, it's up to you how you want to play FFA. For me, I want to win. I want to win. I want to enjoy getting better at FFA, and naturally that means winning more. So I want to try and work out the best way for me to win. So as an example right now, we've seen Purple put down a town center in between three different town centers, and one of them he knows about. This right here is a guaranteed way to lose Age of Empires 4 FFAs. Now, uh, you might beat you might beat green. You might beat orange. You might even beat pink. But you think you're going to beat blue down here who's had all this space who's just been chilling out? You're not. You're not. He's got he's had plenty of time down there. Uh, and because of that, we need to be flexible in this. So you can see that there's a lot of, of players here. So if we take a look at Pink as an example, Pink has spotted out both of these town centers. He, know, he knows about this one as well, because we just saw that villager walk across the top. Uh, when it comes to Green, Green knows only about here, but he sees the Pink Vils, he sees the Orange Vils. So he could cancel it this time right now. He sees the Purple King as well. If we take a look at Purple, Purple obviously knows exactly what's happening here. Orange has scouted everything out. So all four of these players, with the exception of Pink now, who has indeed moved out. So all three of these players have already just decided because they want to be the bigger man, or in this case, I guess the smaller man. I don't even know what, what, the, what the, the meaning of, or not the meaning, but I don't know what the term is. You get the picture, right? What, what should they be doing in this situation? Well, what you can do is you can just pick up and you can just move. Now, of course, you're going to lose time, right? You're going to lose all of this construction you put into the town center. You're going to have to cancel it. You're going to have to, you know, rebuild. And where do you rebuild? Well, you, you just rebuild somewhere that you came from. You know. Okay, so here, as an example, greens come from, from this angle. So he can look to head back down that way. You've got purple, who has come from this angle. So he can look to head down that way. And I like your odds a lot better if you do that. So that, that's my first lesson. Be flexible in cancelling your town centre. Um, hopefully, you, you'll... I mean, we're, we're going to mute it here just because it gets a little bit... Uh, it gets a little bit spicy uh, with the amount of speed and alarms that go off here. But you can see what happens is both players just kind of go, well, hold on, I can't gather my resources here. So nobody's going to get the gold. No one's going to get the stone. No one's getting the berries. And we've, we're all just keeping our villagers idle. And of course, there's just going to be a huge fight in the in the... Uh, the top of the map and of course pink has moved a little bit closer down to me i'm, I'm over here on the blue uh, but just don't think i've got an easy time here either uh, because i'm well and truly aware of the players that are around me so as an example i know that i've got red in the middle he's playing as the order of the dragon i know i've got yellow to my south and i know i've obviously got pink and everybody else partying up here in the north so it's going to be an absolute fiesta to get out of this so the question is how do we get out of it this is where the second point comes in and this is where for 90% for of the civilizations, I, I, don't, I, I don't know the numbers, but almost every single civilization, there is a general rule you want to follow in FFAs. And that is two town centers into Fast Castle. 
Now, there's exceptions to that rule, that being the Order of the Dragon, who just want to go to Castle Age as quickly as possible, the Holy Roman Empire, who wants to go to Castle Age as quickly as possible, and the Juicy Legacy, who can also technically, they don't have to, look at the, look at the range on this town center, by the way, now, they don't have to, uh, but they can go to Castle Age as quickly as possible. I find if I do have a, a spawn relatively close to the middle and I see a couple of relics around, I'll definitely go Fast Castle as Juicy, especially if there's Holy Roman Empire or Order of the Dragon players in the game, because you'd want to deny them relics. But this is going to be the king strategy. And the reason why is this. Have a look at this. We've already got a little bit of a king donation going to come in. So Green's going to donate his king over to Pink. Um, and... Uh, I know that there's been quite a bit of discussion about it lately, and maybe I should just make a separate video on it rather than uh, rather than uh, talking about it here. So let, let's let's move on. So one of the things that happens in FFA is you tend to get a, a whole broad range of strategies, right? Some people will go all in in Feudal Age. Some people will go seven town centers and booming. Uh, some people will sit in the middle and take sacred sites. Absolutely fine. That, that's that's FFA. That's the way it should be played. You know, you've got different sieves, but uh, the the general. Uh, best strategy that you could look for is a two town center in a fast castle. And the reason why is this. Number one, when you go for a two town center strategy, you are making sure that your economy is going to be in a decent spot here. So by going for that second town center, you're going to guarantee that you don't fall behind other civilizations. I've played FFA games before where I've had someone close to me and they've, they've been, you know, may maybe as close as pink is. And instead of going in for a second town center, I've just gone for one TC. And what I didn't realize is that behind that, they had a couple of villages on stone a little bit further away. And I didn't die to them in the first five minutes or the first 10 minutes. And I wasn't able to kill them either. Uh, but they were eventually able to overwhelm me. And that was a, that was a huge uh, problem that I only identified after watching the replay. So make sure you think about going to TC. Uh, the reason why Castle Age is important, there's a couple of reasons. Number one is men at arms. They're a very strong unit and very good at defending any kind of feudal pushes because if your opponent's pushing you with you know spear and an archer or something like that and maybe some battering rams, the men at arms will do very well against that. So getting to Castle Age enables that. On top of that, you also have access to the King's special ability in the Castle Age. You won't have access to that in the Feudal Age, so we can see that ability right here. It's called Treason, and this reveals the King location. And this is really, 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 really important. And this ties in to our third point, uh, which I'm, I'm going to get to. We'll get we'll get to that in a little bit. I just want to explain a little bit of decision-making here, because this was an absolute fiesta of a game, but we somehow managed to get out. When you're playing the Chinese, you've got a number of options as to where you play the Barbican. And the Barbican is a huge part. In fact, one or landmarks are a huge component of why, in my opinion, China is the best FFA sieve that there is. So I've only recently come to this decision. I was kind of like up in two arms, well, up, up in two minds about whether it was the Chinese or the Juicy Legacy. But after this game specifically, I think I realized the power of the Chinese. And the first reason is because of the Barbican. The Barbican is one of those things where in, in the event, like let's say as an example, it's just me and Pink over on this top side, I definitely Barbican him. But the reason we don't Barbican him today is because we want him to fight with orange, we want him to fight with purple. And if we Barbican him, all of a sudden his targets change. His crosshair is now moved towards us. So we need to be very careful about where we Barbican. Now, alternatively, I could just look to go and Barbican uh, red, which I think would have been a decent Barbican. I was definitely throwing that up. There was a, a beautiful spot right here, which hit his gold and hit uh, it hit this side of the town center. But I was fearful that I may make an enemy of him. If, if I go for that side, so I just go for something nice and safe here. Uh, but we're going to go into that second town center. Already, you can see that we've got Red, who is going to be going into the Castle Age with the Burgrave Palace. This is a very, very early Castle Age that's coming through here. Going to be aging up. I mean, he's only got four vills on the Wonder, or the, sorry, the Landmark. I don't know why I'm saying Wonder. That's twice now. I've said it. I'm catching myself doing Age of Empires 3 stuff. But um, I've just brought the sound back in, if for those wondering. So... Um, Let's continue moving on, though, and, and talk about that, that next point. So the third point is that aggression is a must. You need to get out. You need to be aggressive. So this is one of the, the problems with the spawn that Teal's got. So Teal's down here, and he's wondering where the hell is everybody? He's scouted out, you know, 30% of the map already. He hasn't seen a single person. He's probably got all the sheep. Indeed, he does have all the sheep because no one's been over this side of the map yet because we're all too focused on what's going on up here. So this can be a blessing, but at the same time, this can be a curse. It's really important that what Teal does here is follow this same philosophy of two town centers in the fast castle. He can go up to three town centers if he wants to, but he's just going to be late. And that's the thing. You don't want to be late. You don't want to be risking it. Um, and by having all this space, it's going to minimize the amount of aggression he can put out. And it's going to almost put him into a bit of a, a tough spot where he's baited into going for 
um, for this boom style. And you want to really avoid that. Even if you do find space, what that space should buy you is time. But then after that, you should be looking for eliminations. Eliminations are so important when it comes to FFA. In, in the... Within the first 30 minutes of the game... Um, I'm just going to mute it again. Uh, within the first 30 minutes of the game... Actually, you know what? I'm not going to mute it. I'm just going to turn the game down. Sorry, give me a second here. Uh, so within the first 30 minutes of the game, you should be aiming for at least one kill. Um, so whether that's you being eliminated or whether that is an opponent being eliminated, uh, that's really important. Because what that does is it nullifies any potential bonus that your opponent may get as well. Um, but it means that, so as an example, let's say if I get one kill and then Teal has got one kill, then we're both even rather than Teal being ahead by 50. And then if Teal gets a second kill, then I'm only 50 population behind him. So by getting up that extra 50 pop, it just really helps you out in a lot of circumstances. So I think it's really important to try and look for that. Burgrave has started pumping here for Trum Trum on the, on the Order of the Dragon, but he's spotted our Barbican and he's realized, you know what? This Chinese guy, it's probably going to be a bit difficult taking him out at the moment. One of the key things we're going to do here, this isn't in the points, this is more of an advanced technique, but it's scouting. We want to scout our opponent. We want to see what they're doing. We want to see, hold on, is this guy making men at arms from a barracks or is he making men at arms from a burgrave? How many men at arms does he have? Is he attacking somebody else? Is he attacking me? These are all really important questions, but our main focus here is just getting to Castle Age so that we can get access to crossbows. As the Chinese, it's very easy to... Um, archery ranges down, supervising both of those archery ranges, and just making crossbows, which is pretty much the equivalent of a Burgrave for the Holy Roman Empire, uh, but uh, it's in archer form. So let's let's continue talking about that third point. So early aggression being a must. Look to secure that kill before 30 minutes. One of the best things that you can do is just begin to move into men at arms and crossbows. Add in a little bit of siege if you're feeling it. Maybe a couple of spears if you think there might be cavalry out on the field. But it's an incredibly potent combo uh, and something that can really last the entirety of the game. Uh, as an example, as the Chinese, I'm going to go palace guard and crossbow. Uh, and then I will switch that from palace guard crossbow to palace guard hand cannoneer. Uh, and then if there's any, any cavalry, you know, we throw in a couple of spears. We have a great time. So now that we've got the third point out of the way, let's talk about the fourth point because it's about to happen. In this game right here, we're scouting out the opponent. We see exactly what's happening here. This single Barbican that we've put down has been in the perfect place. Close enough to red that it, he has spotted it and immediately regretted his decision walking towards us. But at the same time, you know, far away enough from him that he doesn't really see it as a threat. This this to him is more of just like I'm 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 standing my ground and I'm not I'm not gonna give I'm not gonna give up. Uh, let's have a let's do a quick check-in on the north side. Barbicans come up over here. So you can see that. Because of this Barbican, it's very clear that Pink's intentions are here with Purple, which is where they should be, right? That's his nearest neighbor. But had I gone and barbican him, they would have changed very, very quickly. So the next thing that's going to happen is something that you need to be very careful about whenever you're attacking somebody, and that is called King Confirmation. We need to know where the King is. So you can see right now that we haven't used the, or we have used the King ability. So Trum Trum knows exactly where the enemy Kings are. He knows that the King is inside this town center and we know that he's done that because you can see these little spots on the map the, this is indicating where all the kings are so what trum trum also needs to do here is he needs to have a scout now he doesn't it doesn't look like he's got a scout or at least not that i can see yeah so he doesn't have a scout so what trum trum needs to be doing here is he needs to be scouting the king this is the fourth rule and it's so important when it comes to taking out players so you know what i, I said i wouldn't talk about it i'm going to talk about it now when it comes to king donation so what's king donation? King donation is where you run your king from your base uh, while you're being attacked and you send it to somebody else that's not attacking you. That's essentially king donation. And when it, we were in Outback Octagon, when we had Outback Octagon 2, we specifically banned this. However, you can't ban it when it comes to FFA in quick match and it's a part of the game. Which means that when it comes to Outback Octagon 3, if it does happen... Uh, there's a good chance that I will probably just, you know, change my mind on King Donation and say from now on, King Donation will be allowed uh, and it can be used as a form of negotiation, right? Like if if, I, if I'm if i yellow and I scout red, I can tell him, hey, don't attack me or I'm just going to donate my king. Now, what red needs to do is he needs to scout that king location and he needs to make sure that he's got a plan to deal with that. So normally what that can just look like is a single horseman. Uh, it could be a couple of men at arms in position. You do need to be careful, though, because the king, while he's not the quickest guy, he does have that movement speed. 
Uh, and so what's going to happen here is Trump Trump is going to overrun his opponent. His opponent is looking to go into not just two, but three TCs safely behind his walls. He's got the king down here on the south side, but there's the king or the, uh, the monarch who has escaped. And now Trump Trump knows the king has escaped. So he's going to start rallying units towards his top side. But the problem is, Ozzy Drongo was watching. I knew that the enemy was going, or I knew that red was going to be attacking yellow. I also knew that red was making men at arms. So I was going to be making crossbows. And naturally, I make crossbows, I make palace guards. And so if we go take a look at my position right now, I've got units on the way down here. Because when it comes to and I've, I've also got a scout. I also know exactly where his king is. And I see, oh my god, there's a king right there for me. Now, I don't know if Yellow is donating his king or just trying to keep it alive. But judging by the way he moved it, I think he was just trying to keep it alive. Um, because he doesn't know about the, the stealth forest right here. Um, or he doesn't know about the units in the stealth forest. But essentially what's going to happen here is you've got Trum Trum who, you know, rightfully should... Actually, now that I saw that, the way that he kind of just moved into me... Oh yeah, no, he's just donating the king. Okay, there you go. Um... So th this, this to me, in my mind, is a misplay from Trump Trump. So he knew that the king was here in the town center. He expected to be able to siege down the town center and kill the king. And Yellow took that away from him. And it sucks for Yellow, but I think that Trump Trump had the ability in this situation to mitigate that. Had he brought two, three men at arms up towards this top side of the gate or top side of the wall, he could have stopped that from happening. Of course, there's the movement speed boost that you can use to try and get past the men-at-arms, but the men-at-arms can chase down the king. So I would say this has been a mistake here from Trump Trump, and we were able to take advantage of that. So that's going to be our fourth point in this game. Now, the fifth point doesn't come up for quite some time. It's a little bit further away. I'm going to bring back the, the sounds in here. We'll just enjoy this FFA as I reveal to you the fifth and final point we might speed it up a little bit here. Now, just keep in mind, this is, this is just my basic five points, right? Like, this is not the more advanced stuff. Because there's a lot of advanced things that we could talk about. Actually, that's probably not a good time to bring the sound back in. We're getting attacked by pink. Uh, we've built up a, a decent little mass here, of course. Remember, remember, two town centers, fast castle, lots of production, and then just spamming units in the castle age. Castle age is a really safe age to sit in, right? You don't have to go up to imperial, but you don't want to stay feudal for a long time. You want to try and get to castle age. Just because you do have access to that king ability, locate everybody, locate kings, makes it easier to snipe people out. And now that I've got a kill, I say, you know what? Wonderful. I am going to get on the aggress uh, aggressive and I'm going to go attack pink. We've just eliminated him completely. We've got an outpost looking towards that top side. The only thing I'm fearful of is if he looks to donate his king towards purple. So once we get into the base, what I want to do is I'm going to send the rams in to attack the wall, but I'm going to send my palace guards in behind the town center. You want to know what the issue is though? I haven't checked the location of the enemy king. You want to know where the enemy king is? He's right here. He's waiting to be attacked so that he can hand his king in to the player who isn't attacking him. And in this case, it's red. Now, I don't know if these two are buddies. I'm just going to assume that they're not just because of how rampant, rampant, rampant. I don't know how, how common it is. So here you can see I'm going to come in and go, oh, wait a minute. Where, where's, where's the king? He should be in the town center. And now we're going to pop him out. And there he is right there. And we see him moving towards red. And immediately I just know, okay, it's a king donation. Let's move on to the next guy uh, and, uh, and and go for it. So th this is, you know, this is a mistake on, on my part right here. This, this king should not have got away. We should have identified that this king was, you know, it's a fish out of water basically. And that we, we need to, we need to keep on moving on. So we, we see more aggression with our, so w when you, when you utilize that uh, king ability, uh, it also reveals, I mean, it reveals the, the king's location, but it also reveals uh, the town center that they're in. And you can see whether that town center is on full health. You can see if units are attacking that town center. Uh, you get a fair bit of information. And one of the things that I saw was that purple was under attack. Purple was being sieged down here by orange. So naturally, we make our way towards this top side. And one of the things that we want to do is you can see that this town center is actively being cleared out here. So we want to try and take out these units on this side because the king, when it pops out, is going to pop out right here. And we want to make sure that we've got decent coverage so that we can take that king out. Because if it's going to be a fight, we've got pretty good damage, uh, but he's got quite a lot of units and he's quite fast as well. So that's something that we need to be considering. So naturally, we're going to come in here. I, I guess ideally what I should be doing is be, be bringing the crossbows in so that they can actually shoot the king. But we do see the king is going to pop out. He's going to do a little bit of a dance here. I feel like this was almost intentional. He came out and then he sort of brought it back here. But fortunately, 
the palace guards with their high damage managed to get the last hit so i was waiting there for the last hit before i take the swing that, that if you've ever played like dota 2 or hon or anything like that uh it, it's the same sort of concept it's not about doing the damage to the king it's about just getting the last hit uh, and naturally this guy surrenders because we've got a huge mass of palace guards that were destroying his army he only had what one two three four like seven horsemen left um and uh, we would have killed his king so now let's just do a little bit of counting we're on one kill down here uh, we're on a second kill over here, and then a third kill over here. We're having a great game. We did miss that one kill in the middle. Uh, that was, you know, a mistake from us. But at the same time, one of the things that you need to be careful of, and this, this is what I was very fearful of happening, fortunately it didn't, uh, is that they would team up on me. They definitely should have. Uh, they, they should have said, hey, you know, Blue has got 350 population. Uh, and, you know, when you think about it, you've got Teal down here who's on uh, 200 population and Red who's on 250. Uh, so naturally, it makes sense to go after the guy with 350 because that's quite a big difference uh, between them. So now we move on to the fifth and final part of this basic guide. And that is walls, 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 walls. You need to be walling. You need, need, need to be walling. So I, I, I like to talk about the onion. The idea is simple. Think of your base like an onion. Uh, you want to start off with basic little walls around the edges of your map or around the edges of your base like this. And then it's going to get to the point where you, you say to yourself, okay, uh, I need to get some stone walls in. Normally this comes in around like the 20 to 25 minute mark. Here you can see we're doing it at 23 minutes. Uh, and I want to get my entire base stone wall the exact same way here that you can see that Teal is doing. So I know that this guy's pretty decent if he's going to be stonewalling up his base at this time. Um, so... This is really important, but there is one rule or one part, one component of this that is more important than the rest, and that is to wall your king. And I'm not just talking about keeping your king behind walls. I'm talking about actually putting your king behind separate walls. So whenever I'm building my base, I always think of um, where am I going to put my farms? Where am I going to put my king? Here, we were very fortunate in that where we spawned, we had a beautiful open patch where we could put down all of our farms. This powered our economy. You can see we're sitting on 2,400 food a minute. This was absolutely wonderful uh, to have in the back of my base. Uh, but now we need to get those walls down. So we're going to be looking to do that, making sure that if we do wall to wood lines, we'd be very aware uh, that our wood lines are eventually going to collapse and we will need to wall them in. So we need to be very aware of that. You can see we did have some walls coming down on the south side. I think Red was preparing for the sacred site. But uh, Teal got some ideas and started pushing out. And, you know, th this is just one of those things where it's it's like, it's an objective mistake from Teal to be attacking Red. Because Red should be his partner in crime here and taking me out. Um, so, very sad to see. Because it, it, I, I think I probably, be, I probably could have taken him 2v1 just because of how far away Teal was, right? Like his reinforcements. I kill his army. His, his army is going to take 90 seconds to get back and, and attack me and... 45 seconds to regroup and get them get the siege to the front all that good stuff so there, there's no real way that red can survive uh, outside of that so now we're going to also look to wall our king in so we're going to put a keep down and we're also going to throw down an internal wall around this keep and what this is going to do is this is going to guarantee that your king doesn't get sniped i have won so many games so many games i have i've taken out players eliminated players because their king has been inside a town center because their king has been inside a keep that wasn't walled. I have lost many games where this has happened. The only thing that stands between teal and death is four battering rams on this wall and 40 fire lances. That's it. He wouldn't be able to stop it. If, if I wanted to take him out that way, I could take him out that way. And I would know that I could take him out that way because if we take a look at my perspective, I'm, I'm actually looking at his king right, right now. And I, I can see, I, I know that this is the main town center, 7,000. I know that there's a really good chance there's no stone walls around this town center. Because typically when our main town center, we are building lots and lots of stuff around it. The exact same way that we're doing right here. Uh, the exact same way that we're doing right here. You know, there's nothing at all protecting these town centers. So we want to make sure that we are putting that back here. So th this is a really good spot. So he should be looking to put a keep down right here and then stonewalling in that keep completely. That would be perfect for him the same way that I've done. And that, that's the fifth and final point. Uh, and I guess we should probably just finish it off with uh, with a little bit of a battle. What do you guys reckon? All right, let's take a look. Let's get that sound back in. We've got ourselves a pretty decently sized battle here. A whole lot of palace guards, some hand cannoneers on the back. Up against Lenshka Men at arms. They're going to try and slice through. 
Now, while this battle is happening, you're going to hear a whole bunch of production that's happening. That is going to be all of those backs that we've got pumping non-stop. Now, one of the, the techniques I'm going to use here, one bombard is going to fire and take the last shot, and then the other three bombards will kill the king. If we, if we can get it. I think he, he just surrendered. And we immediately snipe the king, utilizing those bombards to snipe out the king because our opponent, Teal, he's, he's pretty nearby. He's, he's pretty close by. Now, I spoke earlier about why I think the Chinese are the best civilization in FFA. And one of the things I mentioned was landmarks. And I talked about the Barbican and the fact that the Barbican is so good at allowing you to be aggressive or prevent aggression in the early game. But there's a second landmark that I think is also incredibly powerful when it comes to playing FFA. Let's speed it up here and wait for me to drop it. It's about to come down. I think it's coming down right now. Have we got it? No, not yet. Uh, it'll come down shortly. So you can see right here, I've got an opening uh, in my wall. So this is something that you want to avoid happening because uh, hypothetically, my opponent could just walk through here and then, you know, almost... He, he wouldn't, we, wouldn't be able to end the game quickly, but he would create a lot of nuisance for me. So this is something that I want to avoid at all costs. You always want to keep yourself 100% stonewalled at all time. So what is the landmark, ladies and gentlemen? It is the Imperial Palace. Now, this isn't the best position for it here, uh, but... The reason why I think this landmark actually makes the Chinese the best FFA civilization is because of what it is about to do. It's special ability Imperial Spies. It allows you to see the location of every single enemy villager, trader, fishing boat, trade ship on the map. And now naturally you might not think too much of this. You might go, okay, well I can see he's got lots of farmers, right? But when it comes to FFA, one of the things that happens the later the game goes is you begin to move out of your base. You begin to move out onto resources that are out on the map. Gold, gold, stone. These are really important resources that you're not always going to wall in. You might put a keep on top of them, but you're not going to wall them in typically. And what that means is that as the Chinese up against the Juicy Legacy here, now obviously I've got 400 population uh, and he is <laughs> he's on 200. So it's not a fair fight at all. Not in, not in the slightest. Ignoring that... Uh, and let's just uh, say that it was, for a second, a fair fight. Now I know where every single villager he's got out on this map, out behind or out, uh, outside the safety of walls. And not only that, but I can typically see where the uh, building is on my mini-map so I know where I need to go to find those villagers. So I send palace guards off. I send palace guards down. I send palace guards over. I send palace guards south. You get the picture. So now, all of a sudden, he's going to be starving. He's going to be starving of resources. He's not going to have access to gold. He's not going to have access to stone. Meanwhile, we get the entirety of the map. I remember playing one game. Uh, it was that game with Maggi and uh, and Mr. Bonhart. And I remember thinking to myself, is Maggi map hacking? What's going on here? He's finding all my villagers. And then I realized he's playing Chinese. He's got access to the Imperial Palace. It's such a good landmark for late game for this situation right here. Because when it comes to the fights... Don't get me wrong. I think that every single day of the week, the Juicy Legacy will take out the Chinese because of their Bombard Imperial Guard combo. That is the Imperial Guard, uh, the cavalry unit that's available uh, in the landmark. Uh, well, we can't see it. Wait, is he playing the Chinese as well? I think he's playing the Chinese. I didn't even realize. I thought he was playing the Juicy Legacy. I guess I guess that just shows you the level that I'm on. Uh, <laughs> was he actually playing the... Ch he was too. There's not even a single Juicy Legacy uh, player in the game. Well, let's, let's assume that... Uh, Anyway, you, you get the pitch. <laughs> That's quite funny. Uh, the Imperial Guard, cavalry unit, incredibly strong. Uh, let's just take a quick look here. Where are you? Juicy's Legacy. Uh, so if we go down to the Imperial Age, Juicy's Library, and the uh, Dynastic Protector. So that allows the production of unit cav units like the Imperial Guard and the Yuan Rider. Uh, so that specific unit is very, very strong. Uh, very population efficient. You can see from the cost there that it's a high cost unit. So naturally it's going to be a very high damage, high health unit. Uh, and, and paired together with the Bombard uh, with Cloud of Terror, which gives you area of, of effect and utilizing the Temple of the Sun, which gives you increased range on your Bombards. It's a powerful army. But the trouble that you're going to have if you're playing up against China, they're just going to find all of those villages. And that, that's pretty much it. Anyway, that's my five simple tips to help you get better in FFA. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions, let me know. If you've got any tips that you think the community could use, then uh, let me know. Because we're, we're going to do an advanced guide as well. This has been a basic guide. Uh, so we will definitely look to get into an advanced guide as well. But other than that, we'll leave it there and we'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching.